Hey, review family, I have some explaining to do. So a bit of an update on 30 Facts About. I was going to upload it on Sunday, but some things happened that made me not able to do that. I pre-recorded it on Friday. I got it ready, I filmed the whole video, and I edited it a little bit, but I went to sleep early because on Saturday I had a big concert, which there will be a video for that eventually. So I wasn't able to do anything on Saturday. And then on Sunday I was kind of swooped and recuperating from the concert, and I was doing a little bit of editing, but I didn't fully finish it. And then on Monday I finally decided that even though I was going to finish the editing, it would just be better to save it until next Sunday because that kind of ruins the entire purpose. So expect the next episode up by Sunday. Since you guys are waiting for it, since I didn't upload it on time, I'll just go ahead and tell you that, let's see, it, uh, the, the band that I'm covering rhymes with, um, uh, let's see, treating my words. Please treat my bison. That's what it rhymes with. It rhymes with please treat my bison. But you know what is on time? Throwback Tuesday. This is episode two. It came out with 30 facts about last week. And what Throwback Tuesday is, is a three month cutoff period in which I can review albums that came out three months ago or further back. So I can go over some older releases, releases that I would have liked to cover earlier in the year, as well as some older releases that came out years past. And if you want to know what last week I did, I did False Idol by Veil of Maya. And also, thank you so much for the support recently. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for the support on the first single of my upcoming album, which is going to be coming out December 21st. It's entitled Spectrum, and I hope you guys are gonna like it. You can go watch those videos too if you'd like. I will put them all in the end screen of this video. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the review. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Fed Through the Teeth Machine by The Red Cord. It's a little bit older. It was released October 27, 2009, and if you're unfamiliar, the Red Chord is kind of like a technical death metal, death core, death grind band. They kind of border the fringes of those three genres. They're signed to Metal Blade Records. This is their fourth studio length album. They're from Revere, Massachusetts. This is actually their last album that they have released. It's not like they're not going to release another one, but we don't know because this is the last release that we've gotten from the band, and I actually have it. Look at that beautiful man. And right off the bat, it's 12 tracks and 35 minutes, which is fairly standard for a genre like deathcore, but they kind of ride the fringes of that because I definitely feel like the instrumentation on this album is a bit heavier than some deathcore. I know that you can get bands like Infinite and Annihilator, which is just like so heavy, it's insanity. But while Redcore does have those kind of deathcore tendencies, I really feel like they pass by technical death metal and death grind a bit more smoothly smoothly on this album. And this album really does something interesting. It feels like it would be unfocused if it was any other band for the most part because it feels like controlled chaos, but it feels like intricately controlled chaos. It feels like the band knows what they're doing. It feels like they understand the rules and regulations of the style that they are playing and they're really respecting the genre and not just picking up instruments and just blasting away as fast as they can. It feels like they're actually giving some like thought to what they're trying to do track by track track with some strange tempo shifts and some really nice sticky melodies and brutal riffs from the guitars. Vocals that are crunchy and bestial, not too over the top but not too simplified. Usually on the kind of guttural side, similar to what you might get from a benighted or a cattle decapitation. And this all feels like one song in a good way. It's It feels like it's one concise song throughout the entire thing and it feels like it's not trying to really go too long or too short. It feels like every track fits in well, and given the shifts that the band takes and the nice kind of respect that they give the genre that I talked about earlier throughout this whole album, it really makes it feel like a concise effort from start to finish where you're not really getting any bleak parts because every part is so heavy and so technically efficient that it's going to keep your interest, it's going to grab your interest, and it's really going to lead you through the album that you are listening to. It really has a wide sound throughout the album, and while it can come off as just death grind with some deathcore tendencies. I think the technicality puts it a little bit above average compared to other technical death metal bands, a genre that I am usually very specific and picky about. Nonetheless, it really does set it above a lot of the other bands that I've seen in this genre. But hold your horses, it's not necessarily perfect. There are a lot of riffs and a lot of kind of punching drums that to the ears can sound a lot like some other bands that do the style. But I think the fact that the red chord really does blend deathgrind with deathcore 
hardcore with technical death metal and all these different influences going into one, I think that it gives it a little bit more depth and dimension than just a genre as deathcore or as death grind doing it as is. There are bands that really make the most of the genre that they are in, but I feel like for Red Chord, it works out in their favor to bring in a lot of these influences under one roof. It's not perfect. It's not even the best death grind album I've ever heard or the best deathcore album I've heard, but it really is heavy. It really is interesting. The lyricism and the concept behind this album, I highly suggest checking it out. Not going to spoil it, but the lyricism is really nice on this album, I want to say. I love Demoralizer. It was the only single that was released for this album right before it released, and it's the first track as well, and I think that this is probably the best song on the album when it comes to the depth and dimension and heaviness that the whole album encompasses. If you want a good feel for the album, you probably should listen to Demoralizer, and if you dig it or don't dig it, I think that you'll probably get the good feeling if you would enjoy the album or not, because it is a really good indication of what the album sounds like as a whole. But I'm going to be giving this album a 7 out of 10. What did you guys think of it? Have you heard it? If so, you can post in the comment section below. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for the support. It really helps me out a lot, and I will talk to you guys next time. Sorry I wasn't able to do 30 facts about on Sunday. I will see you on Sunday for that, but until then, my name is Jay Morris, a review guy, and I'm signing off saying fair well. Oh,